Okay, let's get started. As captain, it's your responsibility to make certain that all of the necessary equipment is on board and that your ship is ready to go. Professional pilots always do a thorough pre-flight inspection before boarding their planes. And we'd like you to think like a pilot. Use a checklist to be sure that everything is in order. You can make up your own checklist from our suggestions and refer to it before each outing to be sure you're prepared. In particular, you'll want to be sure you have all the required equipment on board. This can vary from state to state, so be sure you check the regulations pertaining to your area. A good reference is the U.S. Coast Guard's Boating Safety Resource Center website. That's uscgboating.org. For nighttime operations, you must have working navigational lights. These consist of bow lights, red for left or port side, and green for right or starboard side, as well as a steaming light, commonly referred to as a stern light. When you're at anchor or drifting, turn off the running lights and activate the anchor light switch. This light should be the highest point on the boat and must be visible from 360 degrees. In most small boats, the stern light and the anchor light are the same instrument. Life preservers, also known as PFDs or personal flotation devices, must be on board for every person in the boat, and they must fit properly. These come in various styles and sizes, so be sure you have the correct ones on board. When it comes to children, you must have a preserver that fits each child properly. Federal regulations require children under 13 wear an approved PFD at all times when the boat is underway, but state and local laws might be more specific, so be sure to check with your local boating authority. Every boat over 16 feet, except canoes and kayaks, must have an approved Class 4 throwable device. The most common is a cushion. Remember, this does not count as a PFD, and again, it must say approved on it. On board any boat with a gasoline or diesel engine, you must have a workable fire extinguisher. Workable means it has not gone past its expiration date or the indicator needle must be in the green area. There are also regulations pertaining to the proper size and type for your particular boat. So be sure to ask your dealer exactly what you need. Another requirement is that you have on board an approved signaling device. The very minimum requirement is a horn or a whistle. Flares are required under certain conditions, both day and night, generally on a large body of water, the Great Lakes, and open ocean. Flares can be dangerous, though. Make sure they are stowed out of the reach of little hands, and be sure to study the warning labels. Flares will have an expiration date, so be sure to check them, and treat a flare just like you would treat a gun. Never point one at persons or other boats. Keeping everyone's safety and comfort in mind, we also recommend that you carry the following items. A first aid kit, an anchor and anchor line, a paddle or other forms of propulsion, your trolling motor works fine for this, a tow line, a VHF radio, a cell phone, waterproof flashlight, spark plugs and plug wrench, manual baler, some spare parts including fuses, a basic tool kit, it's also a good idea to carry an extra supply of water and food that can be easily stored just in case you get stranded for any reason. You'll sleep better if the kids' stomachs aren't rumbling through the night. Okay, let's get all this stuff on board so we can... Nice job!